My kids go to the Ilan Ramon Jewish Day School nearby in Agora Hills. It is named after Ilan Ramon, the first Israeli astronaut. A few weeks ago, I had the privilege to meet Tal Ramon, one of Ilan Ramon's four children. Tal, a young man in his 30s, came all the way from Israel in order to meet the American Jewish children and some parents that go to the school which is named after his father. Sitting in that crowded room on a hot Friday afternoon made me think and remember anew why I love and care for Israel so deeply. Israel is a country, and it is also a dream, a 2,000-year-old dream that came true and also is still in the making. The citizens of Israel are a unique group of people. We model resilience. We have the ability to cry with one eye and laugh with the other, often all at the same time. How is that so? Trying to find an answer to this question brought me back to the Ramon family. Something about Tal, Ilan, and their entire family tells the story of the state of Israel. It reinforces my understanding of it and also helps me believe that at the end, this troublesome time too shall pass. We shall overcome again, and the future will be better. Ilan Ramon was the son of Holocaust survivors, first generation in his family to be born in Israel. As a young child, his mother taught him how to play piano, and he became a talented classical pianist, loved playing Chopin and Debussy. As a teenager, he knew that, like most Israelis, he would be drafted to the IDF, and he wanted to serve in a meaningful role. Ilan became a colonel and a fighter pilot in the Israeli Air Force. He served his country for 26 years. Ilan was an amazing husband to Rona, an incredible father to four beautiful children, Asaf, Iftach, Tal, and Noah. After Ilan retired from his military service, he had a new dream. He wanted to become an astronaut, something that no Israeli had done before. He wanted to bring the Hebrew language, Israeli music, and Jewish symbols to space. It was a big dream, one that he could not have achieved alone. So the entire Ramon family embarked on this journey together, moving from Israel to Houston, Texas, so Ilan could train with NASA. After four years of training, Elan and his crew were ready, and in January 2003, Space Shuttle Columbia lifted off on its way to space with six Americans and the first ever Israeli astronaut. After 16 days in space, on February 1, 2003, the Columbia Shuttle was on its way back to Earth. Rona Ramon and the four children were waiting at NASA headquarters watching the countdown, and when the clock finally hit zero, they feared that something went wrong. Shortly after, the head of NASA pulled them aside and sadly shared the terrible news that the shuttle exploded and the entire crew died. After this devastating catastrophe, Ilan's family went back to Israel. Rona and each of the children found their way to cope with this tragic loss, a loss of a husband, a loss of a father, a loss of a hero who died too young while fulfilling his dream. Their oldest son, Asaf, wanting to follow in his father's footsteps, became a fighter pilot too. Unfortunately, grief met the Ramon family yet again when Asaf lost his life in an accident as two planes crashed into one another while training. Five years after the tragic loss of Ilan, the family had lost another beloved family member who also died while fulfilling his dream. Asaf was buried next to his father at the cemetery of Moshav Nahalal in the north of Israel. Tal, found relief at his father's piano and remained connected to him through music. 
When I met Tal a few weeks ago, he played John Lennon's Imagine, his father and his favorite song. The song Imagine was played often at the Ramon house. It was also played when Elon was in space, and it was also played at his funeral. Estal played the piano and sang the song at the Ilan Ramon Day School. He explained how his family connected deeply to the song for its message of peace and unity for all people. At the end of this moving encounter, the fifth grade students, including my daughter, Talia Doron, asked Tal, if you could have one wish to come true, what would it be? Tal smiled and said, I would like for all people to love one another. As Tal was speaking, I noticed a poster hanging behind him. There was a map of Israel, lyrics to a famous Israeli song, photo from a signing of Israel's Declaration of Independence, tens of new Jewish immigrants, images of Jerusalem, of young Israelis dancing at the beach in Tel Aviv, hummus and falafel, Adat Yonat, Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, Chaim Weizmann, the first president of Israel, and, of course, Ilan Ramon, the first Israeli astronaut. If I had made the poster, I would have also included photos depicting Israel's diverse demography, including 22% of Israel's population who are Palestinian, Arab, Muslim, Christian, Bedouin, Druze, and other minority groups, all of whom make the beautiful and unique tapestry of the State of Israel. To me, this is Israel, a country of dreamers, a startup project of the Jewish people who, after 2,000 years of exile, had the chutzpah and the audacity to return to our historic homeland to build a national home for ourselves. Israel is a country of resilient people who simultaneously suffer from either ongoing or post-traumatic stress, but at the same time, makes the least one of the happiest places on earth. Israelis know how to celebrate and live life to the fullest, maybe because we can never predict what tomorrow will bring and where the missiles are coming from. Israel is a country of people who care deeply for one another, where people will open their doors to strangers, invite them for a hot meal and a bed to sleep in, even if they've never met each other before. When war breaks out, ten of thousands of Israelis live wherever they are living or vacationing around the world, jump on the first flight back and show up for service army duty, ready. Israelis volunteer more than they work because we want to help everyone who is in need. We will make food, collect clothes, and buy supplies, and do whatever else that is needed for all who are in need. Israel is a country in which day after day, week after week, millions of people are missing the hostages whom we have never met before we go out to the streets to protest, to support their families, and to demand the Israeli government and the entire world to bring them home now. Israel is a country in which thousands of people show up at funerals and shiva minyanim for every single fallen soldier. It's a country where we complain about everything all the time but when we get on an El Al plane and see the Israeli flag, we immediately feel at home, even if the price paid for the flight was absolutely outrageous. <laughs> Israel has very little land. It is the size of New Jersey, I was told. A small country of 10 million people, surrounded by enemies from every possible side. It's a country where people are willing to die while fulfilling their dreams. Dreams that are connected to the simple desire of being free people in our own land, living in security, safety, peace, and harmony with one another 
and with our neighbors. This has been the country's ethos since the very beginning, best captured by the famous final words of Josef Trumpeldo, who was killed defending the village of Tel Chai in 1920. He said, Tov lamut be'ad artseinu. It is good to die for our country. I believe it is now time to shift this ideology and adopt a new one, which is tov lichyot be'ad artseinu. It is good to live for our country. Personally, I don't want to live in a world without the state of Israel. It is my home. It is also the national home for all Jews around the world. It is the only reason that for the first time in history, there are no Jewish refugees in the world. It is also home for almost 2 million non-Jews who choose to make Israel their home, even if offered to live somewhere else, the vast majority would choose to stay in Israel because also for them, it is home. If there's anything this past year has taught us, it is that hatred towards Jews and anti-Semitism was, is, and forever will be part of this world. And therefore, the state of Israel is not only the Israeli dream, but it is essential for the present and the future of the entire Jewish people. Strong Israel equals strong Jewish communities all over the world. And strong Jewish communities mean strong Israel. It's far from perfect. Israel has challenges like any other country in the world. It is a startup, only 76 years old, which means it has amazing potential, but it's not yet fully developed. It is still has a long way to go. Tal Ramon said that he is not only proud of his father, but he is proud of their entire family. Because in order to fulfill a big dream, you need to have people who love you, support you, and believe in this dream with you. The startup dream, which is the State of Israel, needs the international Jewish community to help fulfill its vision together as a family. It is now the time for this Jewish community and all Jewish communities around the world to believe in the State of Israel, to help articulate a vision for its future, and to imagine together what Israel can and should be. At the funeral of the murdered hostage, Hirsch Goldrick Poland, his father, Joan, quoted Israel's national anthem, Hatikva. Od lo avda tikvateinu, saying, our hope is not yet lost. And at the end of sitting Shiva, Hirsch's mother, Rachel, wrote to her community in Jerusalem saying, keep praying that we all survive and thrive again. Somehow, some way, someday, because we will. The prophet Jeremiah living in Jerusalem 3,500 years ago, when trying to comfort our people after the destruction of the first temple said, thus said Adonai, a voice is heard, wailing, bitterly weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. But Adonai says, dry the tears from your eyes, for your efforts will be rewarded, and you will return from the land of the enemy. There is hope for your future, and your children will return to their own territory. This prophecy came true with the rebirth of the State of Israel in 1948. And I believe wholeheartedly that it will come true again. Unfortunately, it is too late for Hirsch Goldberg Poland and for too many others. But it is not too late for the rest of us and for all the future generations 
that are yet to come. At the end of Shiva, the Jewish tradition teaches us to extend our hands to the mourners, help them rise up, and usher them gently back into the circle of life. Mikhail Zatz, an Israeli poet, wrote, get up, lift yourself. You have the power to come back and fly again. Not all has been determined. There are those who miss the rhythm of your steps and the melody of the bells of your heart. Your dreams are also waiting. Get up, reach my hand. As we simultaneously welcome the new Jewish year and prepare to commemorate the first anniversary of October 7th, as we are still deep into a year-long war, mourning so many losses, praying for the return of our hostages, hoping for a ceasefire, and aiming for a peace treaty, let us extend our hands out to one another, lifting each other, refocusing ourselves back on the dream and who we are and who we are meant to be. Am Israel, the people of Israel. Am Israel Chai. May the people of Israel live on. As the Beatles sang, let it be. And as Naomi Shemer, who wrote the song Lu Yehi in 1973 after the Yom Kippur War, became as important in 2023, 2024, and bringing us into the new Jewish year. Join me. Let's sing. Let's pray. May it be. Lu Yehi. From the dark of night about us, there shines forth a blessed star. Then may all the prayers come to be. May peace abide within our land and strengthen all those near and far. May it come to pass, may it be.
people singing you don't know the feel the air everything we wish for louis about the fact 